an artist and also the incoming president for AIG. So my road to being a creative director was definitely not the typical uh, road that most designers take. I was not, uh, I didn't start out in an agency, I didn't start out as a production artist. Um, I was a uh, culinary liaison for Thomas Keller for seven and a half years. And the most common question I get asked is what is a culinary liaison? So basically I was a Swiss army knife for chefs. Whatever they needed, I did. So it could have been design, it could have been marketing, I worked with the media partners. Um, and I got to travel with amazing, driven people for a long time. And um, even though my background was in fine arts, I went to school for design, um, I would say about 30% of my day was spent doing anything creative. But everything I learned from them uh, carried on to my next position. So I started at the Review Journal because they reached out to me based on the work I had done with the Thomas Keller Restaurant Group. Uh, after interviewing, I really thought that this could be a new avenue for me. I knew I would miss food, I knew I would miss the travel, but I really wanted to take on a position that was 100% design. I really hadn't given into that um, passion yet. It was something that has, had always been there, and I decided I really needed to take a chance to really pursue this thing that has always been in, in the background of my skills. I would say the most valuable thing I learned as a creative director is to hire people better than yourself. To feel really confident in the skills that you bring to the table and not to feel subconscious that you know people on your team are going to be better than you and you want that. You want to be challenged every day and you want them to feel like they're in a safe space that they can harness these skills because the end product is the most important thing and when I have a team of all-stars and whatever their avenue is, it just makes it so much more smooth. So my art reflects my desire to connect with people. It's the biggest thing that I strive for with design, it's the biggest thing I strive for with my art. So that's why I mainly do portraits. Uh, I paint people um, and I paint how I feel about them. So for example, um, Karen Miller, who I adore, uh, she's been the subject of a couple of my drawings and paintings and so I always try to figure out a way where I can either incorporate their skin that has a feeling and so um, for one of the paintings I did of her, I really wanted her skin to represent like fruits and like really nice kind of palette of colors, something that's edible because sometimes you see her, you just like want to bite into her. So I wanted to make the skin this really kind of juicy thing. And then uh, one of the drawings I made of her, because she is her own creature for sure if anyone has met her, so I really wanted to make her animal-like and um, nothing too specific, so I just ended up giving her kind of textures of like snakes or ferrets or things like that that was just kind of coming out of her hair. So I just wanted to give her the presence that she's like this wild thing that just kind of can't be contained. And uh, when I do things like this I feel connected to the person and I'm able to describe to them visually how I feel about them. I find my inspiration for art through human behavior. So one of the things I'm most fascinated with is pattern recognition. As human beings were one of the world's best pattern recognizers. It's this thing that um, makes us survive, but it's also this thing that can pull us apart. So how I usually take that is, um, because I'm so inspired by women and female stories, I love to paint women and I like to apply their own pattern, because a lot of the time patterns get applied to them that may be not representative of them. So I like to tell these stories how I feel connected to them in this completely different way with patterns and colors and it kind of breaks that um, inherent thing that we're constantly fighting, it's something that's always in us. So starting in March I'll be the incoming president for AIGA Las Vegas which is a nonprofit group in town for designers. It's also a national branch that's been around for a hundred years. It focuses on uh, community events, education, and further development of design um, as, a, as a career, as a whole. And I would say one of the biggest takeaways I got last year was uh, being sponsored to go to one of the AIJ conferences. And I was lucky enough to go to a diversity and inclusion uh, seminar. And they talked about women in the workplace in design and that we dominate in the schools. We're like over 70% of women in schools. We dominate in the workplace. There's more women that work in design than men. But for some reason, only 11% of us hold the title of creative director. And that is really shocking and something that I think, uh, you know, we consider all the time as women. And that's been kind of one of my focuses uh, the past two years is developing programming that 
shows women in leadership roles. So it, these maybe stories that wouldn't otherwise be seen are just talked about more. So that was something that I was really proud to be a part of last year. I was able to bring Ashley Axius, who is the creative director for the White House during the Obama administration, and she brought the White House to the digital age. She's 29 years old, and I just killed it. And it was super inspiring and someone I hadn't heard of before, but you know, thanks to AIJ and the seminar, I, I got to hear about a lot of inspiring women that are leaders. So I think the more that we see women in these leadership positions, we see those stories, it makes you feel like you know, it is this capable thing. It's not this thing that you automatically dismiss. My greatest achievement in life, I would say, is just basically being a survivor as a whole. I grew up super low income, um, and you know, I had to work really hard my whole life to get anything. I took, you know, the cat bus is what it was called at the time to get into LVA. I bus tables, worked my way through college, and um, just really had to champion uh, for myself. So I always had this internal drive to succeed no matter what. And I think that was something that really helped me in life in general. Um, I've always kind of had this like survivor spirit no matter what. And three years ago, I ended up having my appendix ruptured and it had been ruptured for four days um, before going back to the emergency room after an initial visit. And um, I ended up being in there for a couple of months and I had countless medical treatments, lots of specialists, I pretty much, they told me I wasn't going to make it through the night the first day I was there. And I left the hospital at like 116 pounds, could not walk, I had to learn how to walk again. So I think that whole road has probably been my biggest achievement. It's something that I carry with me all the time, that no matter how much gets taken from you, you you have to try as hard as you can. It makes you realize like how short life really is. And I have all these passions. I have all these uh, skills that I was just like leaving on the table because I don't have time because I have these other things. And it's like, wow, that was a big wake up that maybe you don't have the time. And now you have to learn how to walk again. You have to learn how to hold things again. You have to have to learn how to eat again. It was like a crazy experience that kind of rocked me. And then really pushed me in the last three years I've kind of lived all the dreams that I've wanted.